become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to continue the video series on powerlifting pioneer Joseph Curtis Heese and introduce a new power movement called the Heese Shrug. Known for developing overall strength as well as the size of your ribcage, which was all the vogue back in the silver and golden era, the Heese Shrug is essentially a movement targeted to hard gainers, where instead of grabbing and holding a weight, be it a barbell or a pair of dumbbells, as in the regular shrug and shrugging the weight, one instead places a heavy weight on your shoulders as is shown in the photo, uh, basically as in, in the starting position of a back squat, and you shrug the weight in this manner. A lot of you must be scratching your heads by now thinking, what the hell is Golden Era Book I'm talking about? Well, in this video, I'm going to recount the story as to how Joseph Curtis Heese came up with this movement and detail the movement as well as how to perform it at home or in your gym for those that wish to try it out. Enjoy. After Joseph Curtis Heese had developed the hopper deadlift and the 20 rep squat, that is the 20 rep breathing squat, also called the Heese squat, um, he realized that even hard gainers could not make the gains that were expected. And uh, he noticed, he observed that a young bloke called Charles Tiffins, who had put a light barbell across his shoulders and was actually doing shrugging motions. And he was taking a deep breaths in and just shrugging the weight. And he started, you know, contemplating what this uh, young man had done. And then he figured that if one placed a very heavy barbell and would then shrug the weight, this could possibly work the... Uh, rib cage and chest muscles and therefore cause an increase in chest size and in body weight. Ever the inventor, Joseph Curtis Heese decided to experiment with his idea of placing a heavy barbell on his back and uh, basically developed the he shrug. Um, he found that by placing up to 700 pounds, that's right, you heard it, 700 pounds um, and shrugging the weight, uh, he, he it caused an increase in appetite. He gained body weight, and um, he realized that this only actually happened um, if you actually used very very heavy weights. And he had his students as well. So he exper experimented first on himself, and then had his students try it as well. Up to 700 pounds, he said heavy weights must be used. And um, he found that of course even hard gainers began to gain body weight, and uh, in they began to increase their chest size as well. Now, before detailing the performance of the he shrug as shown in this great photo, um, it's very important to understand that this essentially, this movement essentially is a breathing movement with a very, very heavy weight. And uh, the, um, the emphasis really is on breathing, just like any other rib cage expansion exercise, uh, especially these that were developed during the silver era. It's all about the breathing. Let's, let's just get that um, firstly very, very clear. Now, to perform the he shrug uh, in a traditional manner using a barbell, you, or even a uh, sorry, even a straight, so you can use a straight bar, or even better actually would be a cambered bar. Um, but regardless of which bar you want to use, uh, you need a power rack. That's very very important. And you need a power rack that can actually support very heavy weight because you can use quite heavy poundage for this exercise. You want to set the safeties at a height where you only have to lift the bar an inch off the racks. Now you can see that this guy's not exactly here in this photo using a power rack, but you can see that he's uh, using um, what it looks like squ like self-made squat stands out of out of uh, hardwood, and then he's placed bricks um, to a point where he can where where he, once he's loaded the bar he just has to slightly lift the bar just an inch and that's the whole idea right that's why you want to do this in a power rack because you're only going to be when you're shrugging um, you're only, only going to be moving a very small amount right the, the bar is actually only going to be moving in the vertical direction a very very small amount and so once you you've got the bar on your back and have essentially uh, unrack the bar, you want to brace, stand tall, 
and lean slightly forward and grip the floor. Well, actually, you want to brace before you actually take the huge poundage off the off the um, off the power rack, and then you want to you want to stand tall, uh, lean slightly, and I mean just slightly forward, and grip the floor with your toes, right? And so you've got now the bar across your back, and it's an enormous weight. And all you want to really do now is breathe in, and as you do, you shrug the weight by lifting your scapula and lifting your chest up very important to keep the chest up again it's a breathing exercise and as you do this exercise um, you as you breathe in and shrug the weight you find that it's only going to travel anywhere between half an inch to an inch maybe slightly more and it actually depends on the weight that you're using of course if you're using only three or four hundred pounds it's probably going to travel a, a, you know an inch an inch and a half but if you're using six seven hundred pounds it's barely going to move the idea is to exhaust the breathing muscles that's very important to understand and to try and breathe in as as deep as possible it's a breathing exercise and then of course you're going to exhale and you want to repeat this uh, for as many times as you can and um, that's the whole idea of it now uh, on, upon thinking about this exercise as well i can imagine that a lot of people would be thinking of alternate ways as well and 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 to be honest there could be alternate ways of, of performing this such as using for example uh the smith machine um that's a possibility i guess right if you feel safer um, but again, you want to have make sure that you've got the weight set up so you only have to unrack it. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, unrack the bar. Um, I guess, um, yeah, as, as the uh, recommendation states, just an inch. But I wouldn't necessarily use a Smith machine uh, for uh, very, very heavy poundage because you really do have to unlock the bar to, to unrack it. And I don't think that's very safe with very heavy poundage. Um, I would recommend, I guess, the Smith machine if you want to learn the movement. But then again, it's just a variation. It's probably easy just to use a cambered or straight bar. Another variation, though, that could be more successful, uh, and I was thinking about this today, was the standing calf, like using a standing calf raise machine, right? Um, if you have it set, set properly, um, I think that could actually work very well and you could safely stack quite a lot of weight using a standing calf raise machine to perform the heat shrug. These are just possible adaptations, but of course, nothing will work better than actually um, using a power rack and, have, and very heavy poundage. And I only offer these possibilities as, as, uh, as variations uh, because I know it's going to look very weird, um, you know, in the gym if you load up quite a lot of heavy weight not that you you would in the very beginning of starting this kind of a of exercise but you know i can imagine that there'd be a lot of people looking at you and um if you are those kind of that kind of person that is self-conscious about what other people think or, or they see you doing and start commenting then i guess um you know you may want to use a variation that's the reason why i'm offering these possible uh variations now, if you are interested in the topic of rib cage development, of which I have been focusing quite a lot of time on this channel, because I think it's an essential part of developing a classic physique, a physique similar and reminiscent to the golden and silver era of bodybuilding, then please visit my website, www.goldenerabookum.com. Besides having Reg Park's rib cage and chest development, which focuses on the 20 rep squat, as well as breathing exercises and chest hypertrophy exercises for a full chest development, I've just uploaded a very, very rare booklet. And I want to just spend a little bit of time talking about it. It's called How to Develop a Powerful Chest. Now note the model here doesn't have the thickest slabs of pec muscle in the world. That's not the point of this particular booklet. This booklet is brilliant in that it focuses almost entirely on breathing exercises. And, um, that's why I really, really like it. And I've actually started incorporating many of these exercises uh, in my daily routine. And that's the thing. A lot of these exercises can be done with uh, light dumbbells or without even uh, uh, using any weight at all. 
and they really all focus on expanding the rib cage using a variety of different breathing exercises. That's what's so brilliant about this booklet. It's 36 pages uh, long, and it really emphasizes what I'm always saying about rib cage expansion. It's all about the breathing. And um, this wonderful little booklet, I think, is a fantastic um, guide to the variety of breathing exercises besides the pullover that can be used, especially, for example, on your in-between days. I find that the exercises here are so valuable that not they don't just add to your chest and your rib cage, but they actually serve to help in condition your organs and help you in your recovery. So I actually find that I do them in, in on recovery days and I feel fantastic. That's How to Develop a Powerful Chest, written by Chas T. Trevor. It's a 36-page booklet available on my website now, focusing on rib cage expansion. Check it out. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video on the he shrug. And yes, I do tend to focus a lot on rib cage expansion because this channel being all about old school bodybuilding, um, I think I like sharing the knowledge in regards to developing a large rib cage. I mean, that's what that's a big part of an old school physique. And that's why I continue to talk about this very, very important topic. So I do hope you've enjoyed yet another movement, uh, an explanation in, in detail in, in the history of this particular movement, the he shrug. And um, maybe you, if you do incorporate it, you can tell me uh, your results. Of course, remember when trying this exercise, please start with a low weight and build up slowly. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me a comment and thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to support my research, please donate via PayPal. You can become a patron and uh, also visit my website, as I mentioned earlier, for out-of-print books and courses and old-school bodybuilding. And uh, finally, if you want to get in touch to collaborate or pass on your bodybuilding relics, please get in touch via email. That's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video once again. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. To take full advantage of my affiliation with NSP Nutrition and Old School Labs, please visit their respective websites and use codes GEB20 or Bookworm12 to get a discount off their selected products. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.